So let me just start with you. When when did you when did it all start? I mean, I think it's important to say that I'd, I'd had some kind of experiences of depression before I had children, and I think um, actually for me, having children was a bit of a was a trigger, um, you know, triggering uh, the feelings I'd had before. Um, uh, birth of the first child was quite traumatic. Um, dads aren't allowed to talk about that in the same way that mums are because you know we get the easy job of sitting on the side. Um, it's not easy though. No, it's not I easy. Say. You're no, witnessing no. your loved yeah. one in a yeah. lot of pain. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. But it's also it's also a big thing for anyone to adapt yeah. to. Yeah. It's adapting to the responsibility of yeah. parenthood um, and uh, making sure that you're looking after your partner, supporting your yeah. partner as well. Yeah. And so when it did kick in, yeah. how did it kick in? How did you feel? Um, there was a kind of a growing sense that I, I wasn't doing the job that I, I thought I should be doing, that I wasn't um, the kind of dad that, that I thought I would be, that I was failing, um, that I was letting everyone down. Um, the one thing that I was still doing was, you know, providing financially, but it got to a point after the birth of our second child where, you know, even very routine things at work were becoming enormously challenging. Um, so that, that, you know, it felt that I wasn't even, you know, being able to provide. Mm. Um, all of these feelings on, on top of each other, um, you know, I got to the point where I was crying in supermarkets and not really knowing why mm. and, you know, being given very strange your looks. Your first so GP wasn't particularly helpful. No. The second GP that you went to was. Yes. And so what, yeah. what information did you get there that helped? Uh, the first GP dismissed it. And I think there, there is a kind of, there's a generational thing there, I think. He was an older man and I think, you know, there was a bit of a pull yourself together, get on with it. Um, you're, what are you moaning about? The second GP um, actually listened, and I think that's really important. Um, she took the time to listen to the whole story. She didn't, and she didn't try and kind of medicate straight away. I was very resistant to that, mm. not because I think there's anything wrong with it, but it's not necessarily for me. I didn't feel the solution straight away. Um, I'm very fortunate to work in a place where they offered free counselling. Um, and that was enormously helpful. That, that you know, the key, the f key first step was me admitting to someone that I wasn't coping, and being told that that's okay. Yeah. And how important is that for men to be able to do? Because oh. depression in men is widespread, but yeah. they're very stoic. Just ignore it. They never yeah. go to the doctors. Um, I mean, we're often doing subjects absolutely. like this. Absolutely. And there are two words in what you've just said that really stick with me. You said I felt I was a failure and I felt guilty. Um, and I think that that's, that's classic of people who are becoming depressed, but also this kind of stoical, I must provide, I'm the dad, I'm the, I'm the, you know, the leader of the family. So that this kind of feeling that you've got to keep going. And actually, when I think about the men that I see in my surgery with depression, almost always they have tried to pull themselves together and deal with this on their own for longer than, than women. And I think we are much better, you talk about a generational thing, I think we're much better today about talking about mental health issues but your story says we've still got a long way to go